Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to do something a little interesting today. It is a bonus video for the day. Usually we don't do three, but I was introduced to a band yesterday during a live stream called Vower. And uh, I really enjoyed them. And on stream, I went to see if they had any more music to dive into. And well, at the time they didn't, but they released a single five hours ago. If you're watching this live, I don't think I've ever had a faster turnaround to have put a reaction out for a song so new. But I was so sold on their debut single. I needed to check out another one. And I figured... Why not make a reaction video for it, especially since they're such a small band and hopefully this gives them a little bit of extra exposure, which I hope they make it big because they've come out swinging with a fantastic uh, first song. So, you know, I'm, I'm doing my part trying to help some bands get larger, get that following I think they deserve. The song we're looking at is called False Rituals. Real quick, in the description, it does say that this video contains scenes of a violent and sexual nature. Viewer discretion advised. So, if any of that sounds like it's too much for you, you just hide the tab, look away from the screen, but listen to the music, see if you enjoy it. And, well, I mean, I, I guess also you can just close the window. I'm not going to force you to... To listen to the music and I'm not going to know if you follow through with the, the reaction anyway so what I don't know just do what's best for you man right we all got to self care let's dive into this see what Valor is bringing to the table today oh they put another warning up I appreciate that It's really tough to find the the phrasing on this. The accents are all over the place and I have a tough time finding the beginning of the pattern, especially in the drum work. This feels like it's in three though. Yeah. I hope we come back to that uh Verse though. Okay, so this is also four bars of uh, maybe it's an eight bar phrase, but it is three four. Dang, that is a wild rhythmic section. Bringing the intensity down. Like the double tracked harmonies there. A little bit of a variation on the melody line here. got that high-pitched synth work in the background giving it a darker eerie vibe so we've moved to 4-4 four, four with a 3-3-2 three, three, rhythm introducing some dissonance Oh, 
Yeah, give me them layered vocals. The halftime feel really making this feel larger than life. I guess it's also paired with the reverb on the vocals and the harshes underneath the, the cleans. Yeah, very cool. That's uh, quite a bit different than their first sol uh, single, which I felt was more focused on riff and melody. And it's cool to see this other side of them that's more focused on atmosphere and rhythmic elements. This one is more compositionally dense than I think the first one was. Uh, it shows off a little bit less of their specific talents to play the the music and more so their ability to write it which is interesting i can't think of many bands who release singles like that yeah usually contrast maybe like a heavy hitter one and then maybe a ballad depending on what kind of you know genre you are i don't think many metal bands make uh ballads but certainly in this alternative metal metalcore scene usually they have a ballad or a lighter song maybe a hard rock track to balance out the the metal sound that they have on the rest of it and that's usually where your contrast comes from in your singles but yeah i think it's interesting this one shows the band off a little bit less but shows off their writing chops which i mean comes through entirely in the rhythmic element of this and that's really what i think stands out to me on this track we only have two time signatures here three four and four four but it's really tough to figure out where they all are both the verse and the chorus were in three four it took me two times through that verse to pick it up which I mean, as you all know, I'm pretty quick at time signature. And for them to throw me off like that, I mean, that's... It definitely takes something interesting. <laughs> and my biggest problem was I couldn't even find one. Which is such a rare thing in this alternative metal metalcore scene as well. Usually that kind of idea of where's one only shows up in progressive works. Is this progressive metal? Progressive metalcore? Maybe. I don't know, I'd have to listen to more tracks too is really difficult to say, oh yeah, they're definitely a progressive band. But on the rhythmic side, yeah, I, I might I might choose to put them in that area. But yeah, I had such a tough time finding where one is, and if you don't know where one is, you don't know how long the phrasing is. The rhythmic element in the drums just continued to shake me up, and their placement of their accented beats, primarily where the drums decided to even come in with the snare at times, <laughs> but what, uh, you know, how many times to play their accent or, you know, all that stuff really threw me off. When the vocals came in, I'm fairly certain that at least in my counting, they came in not on the downbeat of the first bar and sometimes i think they came in on the second bar of the phrase which makes it even more difficult because i started to count that as bar one and it isn't <laughs> um but yeah so i was just getting thrown for a loop but once i picked up the chorus was three and then once the chorus ended and distinctly came back to the verse, I was like, okay, this is beat one. Let's figure out where this is where I get lost again. And I started in three this time. And I'm fairly certain our verse and choruses are in three, but they do a fantastic job of keeping it sounding interesting rhythmically. They're not utilizing traditional rhythms. Uh, they're not using traditional accent patterns. They're sort of all over the place in a way that is disorienting, but also easy to follow along with. And I think a lot of that comes down to having some sort of rhythmic element present a majority of the time. And I say a majority because the first, I don't know, first few phrases, maybe the first 32 bars of the song lack uh, landmarks completely. But the second verse has something sitting in the background. It might have been a crash symbol or a hi-hat or something giving us this this constant hit so at least you have this element to groove to and as the song progresses we continue to have uh, sections with at least one instrument giving us a consistent quarter note beat maybe the accent points aren't there but the beat is and that helps a ton in groove and jamming with something just moving your body to the song 
Um, but yeah, so they, they're just, they're finding ways to make it rhythmically interesting while also still creating something that feels groovy that even if you have no idea what's happening rhythmically, you can still move your body to the song. And uh, that midpoint is always really difficult to find. It's really easy to be extremely simple or extremely complex, but to find that midpoint, I think that is true skill right there. And I love that they're doing that. Um, a lot of the the beginning of this song is very chord based. The guitars are there primarily for texture and atmosphere. The drums are giving us that funky uh, rhythmic element. The vocals have an interesting phrasing as well, but that's our core melody right there too. And so we have this idea of foundation rhythm melody for our entire verse and chorus throughout this song. And it isn't until the bridge when we begin to shake that concept up a little bit. The bridge presents us with a change of pace. We move away from the uh, primarily chord-driven guitar work into riffs. The riffs are not focused too much on melody, continuing this idea. However, they're shifting away from harmonic ideas into textural ones, creating fuzzier, heavier sounds and also fuzzier, heavier harmonies. This comes primarily through the dissonance that we hear with the clashing dyads, the higher range guitar work. This creates a feeling of unease, of distress, of tension throughout pretty much the entire back half of this track. And there's, a, and there's an antagonistic animosity to the work from here as well. We also hear this parried, paired in the drum work, parried. Uh, in the drum work with more aggressive drumming styles rather than kind of leaning back on the backbeat and providing this nice metronomic style. No, no, not metronomic style. This, uh, oh, that's what it was. It was the, the syncopated rhythmic groove, pulling away from that to something a bit more rigid but heavier hitting. This is further accentuated with the halftime feel that we get a Browns minute 245, three in this track. Um... And it just becomes a very aggressive atmosphere for everything. The bass, the guitars, the drums. And of course, continuing on with this, we have the vocalist switching out the clean uh, vocals with the consonant harmonic style for harshes in pretty much this entire section here. It is aggressive overall. It is antagonistic. It is heavy. It is weighty. And yet it is still retains this palatability to it. Once again, balancing extremes. This could have gone a lot heavier if they wanted to. The opening section could have gone lighter if they wanted to, but they wanted to find these uh, this balance, not just between the verse chorus and the bridge, but between the rhythmic technicality of our verse chorus and the, rhythm, the simplicity but heavy hitting elements of the bridge. And so once again, just contrast, dynamic work. There's so many sections in here that are designed to act as a balance, a counterweight to something else that happens in the song. This section also brings out a synth pad, and it's this higher pitched sort of piercing sound that just sort of emanates around the band. I found this interesting because if I remember correctly yesterday morning, I gave a lot of praise to Vower's first single for incorporating the electronic keyboard synth work in a way into the music that wasn't just this outside texture, something that adds to the music rather than just adds to the atmosphere. And this song does the polar opposite of that, relegating it back to just the atmospheric section of the beginning of the bridge. It might have been also present in the verse chorus. I don't quite remember because I was so fixated on the melody and the rhythmic aspects, but I don't remember the synthesizer showing up at all once we kind of worked our way back to a balance between the melody of the first part and the hard hitting atmosphere of the second part. And we'll get into that in a second because there's something really cool that happens there. But uh, yeah, was, I, 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 I only really remember it in that one section. It was just this long held out chord that sat in the background. Uh, but you know, that's, that's how bands work. They have different ideas. They want to explore different things. Singles are going to accentuate different ideas. Like I mentioned, the first single that we checked out on yesterday's live stream was a bit more focused on what I felt was melody writing and showcasing all of the uh, musicians in the group. This one feels like it showcases their writing a little bit more than any specific instrument. So it makes sense that even the 
the synthesizer kind of reduces its role a little bit, or at least its prominence, just like all the instruments have also reduced their prominence in order to work for what the song is aiming for. Everything is in service to the song, not in service to individual members. So yeah, then that brings us to our final segment in this, which is sort of a merger of the both of them. And I found this to be really cool because we retained the drum pattern from the end of that bridge, but we bring back some of the melodic vocals and guitar playing from the beginning of the song and we mash these together. I don't think we bring back any specific melody from the beginning. That would have been really cool to tie everything back together. I think this is a new section but it's created with the specific drum idea from the bridge and the melodic qualities of the opening, the verse chorus section. And I thought this was a cool way to wrap it up to kind of create this, this midpoint. I mean, everything here has been about finding the middle of two extremes, right? So yeah, we take the aggressive and we take the more, uh, the lighter, but rhythmically interesting element and we smash them together. And what we get is the final, 30, 40 seconds of this track. And I just thought that was very cool to have that little uh, continuation from where we just were and pairing it with something different, creating this new context for a sound we were familiar with. Nice way to bring everything together and, and wrap it up. What does this song mean though? I'm not too sure. I tried to pair it with some of the ideas of the music video and overall it is just to me at least, I might need some more listens on it, but it's a song that is a bit of a puzzle. It's a bit of an enigma, and by the time you figure it out, it creates this anger. Maybe the anger is pointed at you. Maybe once you figure out the puzzle, you become angry at what the solution is. I'm not quite sure, but there's both these elements to it. One's a bit more laid back and cryptic, and the other is in your face aggressive. Uh, and it you know, that could represent a lot of things, but that whole sort of um, enigmatic aggression is, you know, I kind of read it as a puzzle or maybe an acknowledgement of something, maybe something you haven't realized your life, all your life. And then you kind of come to this realization and you're angry about the, the way things are. Maybe it's like, you know, you realize that after 10 years, your best friend has been backstabbing you every day for those, you know, for that decade. And now you're just filled with anger at this revelation. That's kind of what the song feels like to me. And of course, it is paired with visuals of phones overtaking people. So maybe it is an anger at the current state of technology. I don't know. I'm going to have some lyrics right now and see if that can guide me further in my understanding of what the song is attempting to say. All right, so lyrically, it's about, well, as the song states, false rituals, uh, things, cycles of our life, actions that we repeat over and over and over, but don't actually gain us anything. Um, at least that's how I read the false part of it. Because the other idea would be that it's not a ritual, it's a fake ritual in that it isn't a repeated cycle of events, but the song is so focused on cycles and habits that... I can't read that any other way. I, I don't think reading it as a ritual that isn't cyclical. I, I don't know. That doesn't even make any sense. It's just a normal action. <laughs> so I have to read it as a ritual that gives us no benefit, which I think it's a rough reading of false, but it's the only one that makes any sense to me. But uh, it speaks about how these rituals take time away from us, that these habits end up being meaningless. Now, there also isn't a lot of direction pointed at what this ritual could be. This song could really be about anything. Our opening stanzas say, Drawn in by future mistakes, falling into this chamber and repeating the pain, seeking to change, but I know I won't. So it's about doing these cycles that uh, actively aren't even not benefiting us, but are actively harming us. We repeat the pain over and over. The chorus says we trust in false rituals give time away, lost in habitual moments, and we feel no closure. There's always this need to do the ritual again. What I find interesting about this, uh, actually, we'll skip that. We'll come back to it. Um, 
The next set of lyrics says, still we push forward with idle hands, endless, so much to see, we're starved, so we feed. The idea that this uh, cycle not only doesn't give us closure, but it is also endless. Not only will we never feel satiated, but we'll also never reach an end, a finality to it either. And it says, unable to satiate the faults my own, no sleep in the bed I've made. And that's all the lyrics. So we have this habit that harms us and we keep doing it. There's no end to it from internal or external motivators. And that's it. This is vague. It could mean a lot of things. Um, but there is one thing I want to point out here. Well, if you look at the music video, it's obviously social media, uh, endless scrolling, stuff like that, uh, social media. I think that's what it feels like to me anyways. When you pair it with that, it becomes very obvious with the secondary part of the um, multi-art project here. Multimedia. <laughs> that's the word. Multi-art. But what I really like here is a shortening of ideas. Here's the first chorus. Trust in false rituals, time given away, lost in habitual moments, we feel no closure. Here's the second chorus. Trust in false rituals, we are lost in the habitual, it's cyclical. And here's the third chorus. We are lost, ritual, habitual, cyclical. There is a condensing down of these ideas shorter and shorter. And I think this is really interesting. And I hope it was intentional because if this song is directly pointed towards social media and the rise of technology in our lives and the way that our time is being commodified and we have algorithms created in order to ensure that we spend the maximum amount of time within these applications and, and services, it's also about the dwindling attention span from reading texts to watching videos to watching shorter videos to TikTok and reels and shorts and the 10 second video length that dominates social media today. This chorus starts out very full, still a bit vague and short. It's not necessarily poem length. But it gets even shorter and shorter, and by the end, it's just one-word sentences. Whatever is needed best to most concisely get the information across in the least amount of time, because somebody is going to click off of your video. Um, and again, I don't know if that was done intentionally or not, but I really love that additional touch. If this song is specifically about social media and not just false rituals in general, which again, the lyrics are too vague but the music video certainly points the finger. What I found interesting about this, though, is that the song is about cycles, but isn't necessarily cyclical in itself. We do have the verse, chorus, verse, chorus loop, but once we get out of that, the bridge to the end is linear. We do have a bit of a callback there in our final section, but we never come back to the verse or the chorus. For a song whose lyrics are so focused on the concepts of cycles and habits, the music doesn't allow you to build any. Even more interesting is looking at the rhythmic elements of the first half of the song. It's really difficult to get any, into any cycle or habit in that. It is something you have to work to understand, which runs against the concept of social media. I'm kind of of two minds about this. From the first, I like the synergistic elements of creating music that lines up with the lyrics and I would have liked a song that was a bit more cyclical to go along with this um, so that the music can feel stuck in a loop just as our narrator feels stuck in a loop but on the other side I like how this song is against being in these habits how it asks you hey you should acknowledge these elements and while our narrator wants to change but doesn't the song is saying hey you might be stuck in one of these cycles, one of these rituals. Acknowledge it. I'm going to help you see it. Maybe you can break out of it. And it does so by creating a song that is not easily digestible in all of its ways. That is not cyclical. That pushes against it and creates something that's a bit more unique. So like I said, I'm of two minds. I think both sides work really well. And I'm glad they went with one of them, at least. <laughs> 
All right, those are my thoughts on Vower's false rituals. Let me know what you thought in the comment section. If there's anything you agree with me on, disagree with me, maybe there's something that I said that's incorrect and needs to be addressed. Maybe you just have your own thoughts, opinions, and perspectives about it. Toss all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, normally I would put links to my stuff. However, Vower is a new and upcoming band. I want to put their links in there. So anything I can find social media-wise, streaming platforms, their YouTube, any of that is going to be there. If you enjoyed this, click on any of that and go check out more. Like I said, they only have one more song, but it's definitely worth checking out. Uh, like, subscribe, ring bells, thumbs up, hearts, whatever you land on. Show them some love from this community. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell to this channel. Um, and yeah, that wraps it up for today. I'll be back tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC as usual. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.